<laughs> Yo, man, I need to get that fabric cut. Can you help us out? Nah. Nah. Hey, <laughs> man. Do you want to know how to acoustically treat your home or project studio without spending hundreds or thousands of dollars? Me too. But I actually got the plan for you. I'm about to go to one of the first stops that you need to get the supplies so you can DIY your acoustic treatment in your home studio. Let's get it. Mimi. Yeah, man. So we just pulled up to everybody's favorite hardware store, Home Depot, and this is where we're gonna be able to get most of the supplies that we need for our studio's acoustic panels, all right? So let's just go ahead in and start shopping, you feel me? All right, so one of the first things that we're gonna need is to get our insulation. I always go with the Roxel Safe and Sound. It's pre-cut. And if that brand ain't available, we'll find a similar brand, but it's cut to the exact specifications that you need. And by starting off with getting that insulation, you also know, need, know how you need to cut your wood. And they'll do that here too. Ha, no salt needed, baby. All right, when it comes to the insulation that y'all need, you wanna look for this mineral wool, right? And you'll see professional grade mineral wool is, is treated for sound control, right? And, and that's one of the main things that we wanna, that we wanna make sure that we um, are looking for. Also, it has the specs, the specifications of this um, uh, insulation right here, 3.5 inch thick. That way we know the wood for our frame, what size we need to get. We're gonna want something that's about three inches to three and a half inches thick on that. 15 inches wide, so we wanna make sure that when we have the people here at Home Depot cut our wood, we're gonna have the, the wood slats going across the tops and bottoms to be 15 inches wide, 47 inches in length. Well, what do we uh, equate that to? That was about uh, four feet, right? Because that's four feet is 48 inches, right? So we will go with that uh, for the length of it. And one packet is gets you six pieces. If you need more, and, the, and the, for the six pieces, it says 28 bucks. If you need more, they have another package here for $48. Um, and this one gets you 10 pieces, okay? So depending on how many panels you want, since I'm just making a few panels today, I'm gonna go with this $28 pack and get these six pieces that we need. Next stop is gonna be to actually find the wood to match for my frames and then go have them cut it up. Let's get it. All right, child. So what we're gonna do here is grab our lumber and we're gonna have the employees at Home Depot cut it up so that we don't gotta go home and worry about sawdust or none of that, the noise or nothing, right? Um, the lumber that we decided on is gonna be a one by four and it's a 12 foot. Now you're gonna need each one of these. It'll get you about one panel for this. You could also go with the one by three. It'll be a little cheaper. Um, I just decided to go with this one to make sure we get full coverage over the fiberglass insulation, but I have done the one by threes and it works just as good. And again, it's gonna save you a few dollars to have a little bit less wood. Now, when you're picking out your lumber, it's super important to make sure that you don't get um, uh, pieces that are warped or have big knots in it because if they're warped and bent and have these knots, when you're putting together your panels, they're not gonna be straight. So what you wanna do is kind of lay it down and make sure that you got some straightness um, on that wood. I'm gonna grab another piece here just to see if I can find one that is kind of warped so we can see the difference, okay? So we look at these, these two boards are actually pretty good. This one has a little bit of warping on it. It's definitely, it's not terrible, but um, so I would definitely still use both of these, but I've seen some uh, pieces of wood in here that are just terrible, completely unusable. So make sure y'all don't get those um, when you're shopping. I'm gonna put this one back and I'm gonna just grab this one and have uh, the employee start my cuts. Uh, what we wanna do, we wanna do um, two, uh, four, inches. yeah, two forty-eight inches and two uh, fifteen inches. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell you right here, yo, this part can get a little loud. So for my audio engineers out here, you might want to step away and uh, or at least bring some ear protection for this part. I'm gonna go and find my next pieces that I need to complete this puzzle while we getting these cut, so I can still go back and mix.
Cool, so we just got our wood cut, nice and neat. We even got a little extra piece in case we needed that. These look pretty good. Look, man, it really don't get no simpler than this. Um, next, I just wanna grab some wood screws that we're gonna need to assemble this frame. Hopefully you already have a drill. If you don't already have a drill that's not gonna be included in this video, that might get a little bit pricey, but honestly, we did um, some of these panels using like a really small drill that you probably can find at like Walmart or something. Um, if you don't have a, a heavy duty drill. Yeah, and then we're gonna uh, also pick up a staple gun and some fabric and we ready to put these things together, all right? So let's go find our wood screws. So um, when it comes to the screws, we just wanna look for some basic, you know, multi-purpose construction screws that's definitely not too big or too long. Um, I'm gonna choose these one and one quarter inch uh, screws. This will be more than enough that we need to actually get through the wood that we have and make sure that they all connected, okay? So just um, a box of one and a quarter inch uh, screws. You probably had some of these laying around, but if not, just pick up a little extra box of those. And that's what we're gonna use to put our frame together. Next thing you're gonna need is a staple gun, man. And it don't look like this thing come with no staples, man. So you're gonna also need some staples because we're gonna use this staple gun to actually uh, attach our fabric to the frame and lock everything together. So, you know, you ain't gotta go carbon fiber boy. You might wanna go, you know, just aluminum boy. But I'm thinking I'm carbon fiber shorty today. <laughs> You know, when you come to sex checkout, they should give you a discount because it's kind of like you working for them. I should get at least 10% off for scanning my own stuff. Dude. All right, y'all, so one of the last things that we're gonna need to get before we assemble our acoustic panels is gonna be some fabric. Now, you can choose any type of fabric that you want to, so I'm at Hobby Lobby to see what they got. Let's get it. Fabric. They got all type of fabric in here. We wanna get something that's uh, gonna fit whatever color. We wanna grab something that's gonna fit whatever color palette that we going with for our studio. So maybe you going with the camo look, but it's also important not to get something that's too thick or even something that has a reflective pattern on it too. Like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't grab this stuff with this reflective kind of plasticky design. It's just gonna limit the amount of absorption that you actually getting. So um, I'm gonna find a nice thin fabric. Oh, this would be nice though. Look at that. And that's, that kind of got that cheetah print on there with that glitter, that's cool, depending on what kind of kind of vibe you're going for, but I'm gonna grab some basic fabric and grab a couple yards. You can get about, um, you should be able to make about six panels with about nine to 10 yards, depending on how conservative you are with uh, cutting the actual fabric. So um, let's find that right now. See, the dope thing is, man, you ain't really gotta do too much. They are gonna cut this for us too. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> Yo, man, I need to get that fabric cut. Can you help us out? Nah. Nah. <laughs> A few inches later. We just got the last piece of the puzzle, which was the fabric. Um, so now we're gonna head back to the studio and quickly assemble these panels so we can start recording, man, and mixing and all that. Let's get it. Ready. All right, y'all, so I just made it back to Studio B where I'm about to be constructing my acoustic panel. So first thing that I wanna do uh, when I start off is actually assemble the frame of it. Um, you, you, you simply wanna just lay out your wood just to make sure. Now, to ensure that everything fits appropriately, you wanna make sure since these slots are 15 inches across and we actually uh, got, and, and the, uh, sorry, the panels that we bought the uh, mineral wool insulation that we bought is also 15 inches across. You wanna make sure that you use the full length of these. You don't wanna go inside because then your panels are not going, they're gonna to be too wide and you're not gonna have enough space in the frame. So you wanna use the shorter slats right on the inside. 
which is also going to work out because the actual length of the um, panel is really only 47 inches. It's not really a full 48 inches. So having that extra half inch gone is going to give us the perfect, um, the perfect measurements for this frame. So once I got this in, now I'm just going to go and hit a couple of screws on each uh, of these uh, uh, corners. So I got my wood screws. I got a real drill this time. And we're going to go ahead and go forth with the mission, all right? So just want to start off making sure that it's lined up as tightly as possible so you can be as, as neat as possible with this. Right on it. Just apply a little pressure. Get my screw on here. Oh, now that's a drill drill. That's a drill drill. Can we turn this thing down? Ta-da! All right, there's our frame. All right, so this is the basic framework that we need. Nice and neat, very sturdy. Only thing that we need to do now is lay out our fabric, all right? So I'm gonna lay out this fabric before I cut it. Now you'll probably get a bigger roll than this. It's important to make sure you measure this out so that you can make the most uh, economical use out of your fabric, right? I can make like two panels out of this if I cut it right. So I'm gonna lay that right on out. I'm gonna lay that right in the middle. So you don't really wanna do it like that because then you ain't gonna have no, it's gonna be uneven. So you wanna just lay that thing in the middle, stretch this out. This fabric was about five bucks a yard, which works out. And it was on sale for 30% off today. Sure, it looked like we're gonna be able to get one of them out this bad boy. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. So then we just need to cut that, that excess off right there. All right, here we go with a little snip tuck. Before you cut, make sure you give yourself enough little leeway to fold over you don't want to be right up on it see we got that three four inches that we need to come off so i would give it about six to eight inches same thing on this side see we got a little leeway to me that's going to be that's going to be enough right there right so you just want about an inch or two past that that wood and that's going to be enough you don't want to do too much because again you're going to be wasting your fabric Cool, it's enough to lay over and enough to lay over the sides. Next, I'm gonna grab my fab my insulation and lay it right into this frame, start to wrap it and hit it with the uh, staple gun. See how that thing grow when you open it up. Cool, and that's what you wanna see. Now, a lot of times, let me close this door. Um, a lot of people will recommend that you use uh, gloves or something like this, but you know, my hands have been through a lot, so I'll be all right. Just make sure you wash your hands, don't touch your face, and don't be like rubbing all on it more than it is necessary, and you'll be all right. The this insulation does, this is more like um, mineral wool, so it's not really the fiberglass. The fiberglass stuff gets really crazy and itchy, but this can do the similar thing, so it's definitely recommended that you use some gloves, but, if you're an OG like me, you done been through the fire before, then you know you good. Okay. That fits in perfectly. Right into that frame. Perfect. Okay. Next thing we want to do now is just go ahead and wrap our fabric around there. We want to do it nice and tight to make sure that front face of the uh, panel is going to be very, very smooth. So I'm going to just start off by pulling one edge up and then also just making sure that my ends are straight and pulled out too. Okay. And I'm gonna grab the staple gun 
and start to staple this on down. Now, when it gets to the other part is when I really focus on making sure that it's nice and tight, okay? Okay, and now what we wanna do is do the same thing across the other side, but this is when, when we pull it, we just wanna make sure we pull it nice and snug. Snug as a bug in a rug. Nope. Okay, and I'm gonna start on the end just to make sure there's no bunching or anything like that. Cool, so we got this so far. If you want, you know, you could trim this excess off. You don't really have to, um, but it, because it'll just kind of stay back here as a flap. And again, you don't really want that insulation to be exposed too much. Thank you, sir. So we just wanna start off with a fold, right? And this part can get a little tricky, so take your time, or if you have a friend with you that um, actually is uh, good at kind of doing folding and more tedious stuff, Allow them to help you, right? Uh, but if you come on, come this way real quick so we can see how I'm about to hit this corner. So you see how it kind of just comes in naturally lays. Um, I want to play off of that, that natural uh, fold that's happening. So I just want to come right in there. And this is the, the tedious part where you got to just slow down just a little bit, okay? And just make sure that that's nice and straight as I fold that in. Then I'm gonna fold up this other side to, to cover it. And again, making sure that I'm also pulling nice and straight. So this one I say that sometimes getting rid of some of this excess is gonna be key. Cause the least that you gotta fold up in there, the, the straighter you can, you can get it, all right? So there we are. And in the middle, you just want to pull that nice and tight, nice and straight. Try to get as much excess out of there if you can. See, you still got a little bit too much excess for my tay. But I'm going to just try to lay that flat in there. Flat as it can be. And we're just going to pull that up nice and neat. So if you see, we have a panel done, nice and neat, right? We got our nice, neat corners at the top and bottom. It looks beautiful. It's gonna be really nice against the wall and it's very absorbent as well. Um, the next thing we need to do is attach our hooks and our wire for uh, mounting this. So, so I really just need to decide which is gonna be the top. Doesn't really matter. I'll just use this as a top. What you wanna do though is measure from the top to a certain point on how far down you're gonna have those hooks because you want your hooks to be in the exact same spot. So let me grab my measuring tape and my hooks. I'll be right back. Yeah, so what I wanna do is just measure out, you know, where I wanna put my, my hooks at. I'm gonna go about 16 inches from the top and I'm gonna just put a little mark right there so I know where to drill that in. We're gonna do the same thing. 16 inches, okay. Cool, so now we take these hooks. They come with a little, remember these little hooks? They come with a little screw. All you gotta do is put that in here, a little D-ring hook, yeah. You wanna make sure that the hook part is faced upward and put your screw right where you need to be and go ahead and attach it into the into the frame. Uh-oh. Back up. There we go. Nice and neat. That hook will hook out just like that. We'll come to the other side and put our other one on. 
and we'll be ready to hang these joints. So uh, the best way to attach the wire is to first just go ahead and tie it on one end of your hooks, all right? So I'm gonna just do a nice little little loop to loop uh, with the wire here. Try to get it around there a couple of times. It'll it ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna just wrap it around a few times after I do my first little loop de loop. It's gonna be nice and neat. Eventually. Cool. And next. I just want to kind of measure, you know, where at what point do I want this to stop? How high do I want it be? Because if you don't, you know, have an uh, exact specification, then these can end up with all different uh, at different heights based on how long your cable is, right? So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut it right at about that spot with a little extra so I can tie it off. A few moments later. All right, and you got a nice little hooking system, which is my favorite way to actually do this, all right? So we're using these little uh, kind of J hooks that come with that picture hanging kit to actually mount these on the wall. I love this method, and that's why we put the wire on there so that we don't have to use two spots and drill two, two holes in the wall for every panel. This way we can just put one hole in the wall for each panel right where we need to be. You can put this in with a little nail. Really easy to, to maneuver and move around if you need to, to make sure you're in the exact location that you want to be. You simply just going to take this wire after you get that hook up on the wall. You can feel it. You hang it. And voila. We got our acoustic panel up on the wall. It sounded good, it's looking good. And the most important thing is that it didn't cost us an arm and a leg to do this. Yes, it's gonna cost you a little bit of your time, but hey man, <laughs> it's better to know this process anyway when you're building your home studio. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Please drop down in the comments, let me know what you think about this acoustic panel design, the build of it, the cost effectiveness of it, and what other kind of studio stuff do you wanna see us DIY, all right? Y'all be dope.